Today in Matt's class, we are going to talk about the artistry of the great Drew Struzan. Drew Struzan is arguably one of the most important illustrators of all time, let alone today. He's a living legend. He's illustrated so many movie posters. I think it's over 300, but if you've ever seen a Star Wars movie poster, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, the Muppet movies, you name it, Drew Struzan is probably the artist behind it and he's just got this really, really great style, really great texture, and his design is unsurpassed. So I wanna take a look at some of the specific pieces here at the Galactic Gallery. That's right, we are hanging out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and it's this incredible gallery owned by Ben Stevens. This is definitely the largest collection of Drew Struzan artwork you will see anywhere. So I've been following Drew's work for so long, and I remember once, the first time I ever saw a Drew Struzan original, they had one at Disneyland, and I must have stared at it for five hours. And then years later, I saw another one on the Warner Brothers lot. They had a Harry Potter comp that he did. Again, I stared at it for hours. To see this many pieces under one roof, all together, framed beautifully with awesome lighting. It is just, oh my gosh, it's inspiring. I have goosebumps right now thinking about it. When I was here last night during the VIP opening, I didn't want anyone to see. I had tears in my eyes and I kept turning away and like <laughs> wiping like this because it was just, it's so beautiful to see these up close. So a lot of times I'm showing my students the work of Drew Struzan. I have a lot of his movie posters hanging around my classroom and my students all marvel at the work. And a lot of times what they're trying to do, I think we as students, a lot of times what we're always trying to do, we're learning the foundation and we're learning how to illustrate things so that they look real. So it looks like the photo. And a lot of times when my students look at Drew's work, it's the first thing they say, wow, it looks just like Harrison Ford. It looks just like a photo. And yes, that's very good. It's very cool but the thing that I try to really focus on to show the real genius behind Drew it's not just his ability to capture a likeness it's his ability to use color and texture and his composition in my mind there is no one better that knows design and texture and color better than Drew and he's able to make things not just like a photo but I call it larger than life and there's just something about his work and that's why he did so many of these amazing posters. He was able to bring something to the table that photos just can't do. Not to knock photography, photography can be cool too, but it's larger than life. He's bringing some kind of pizzazz that in one image, it's encompassing the majesty of the movie and like capturing the magic and he does it so well. And again, in this case, it's the front cover, it's the spine, it's the back cover, yet the whole thing works together. I'm so jelly. It's amazing. This is so beautiful. This is the Caravan of Courage. I remember staring at this in the newspaper when I was a kid in the 80s, and I didn't know who Drew was yet, but I just remember the artwork and just being blown away by it. Now that I can see it up close, just seeing the colors, and I just love the blues and purples as they transition into the warm colors here. Plus, don't forget the Moroccan teal that just kind of spirals out and kind of has this rim light of the Moroccan teal. It's so good. Muppet Treasure Island. Again, his ability of knowing when to really put in the focus of detail and when to let it go. I love that when you look at this whole treasure down here with the skeleton, it's almost like he was able to put the focus right here, and then as the treasure gets farther away, it gets a little bit more out of focus, and then as it comes forward, it's a little bit more out of focus down here, which it needs to be because this is where the credit block goes. But just the ability to, to even think to do that, let alone to be able to do that, it's mind-blowing. 
So it's really neat the process that Drew has that a lot of artists use, but I think Drew is really the artist that made it popular. And a lot of artists, including myself, a lot of times we're trying to emulate that larger than life technique that Drew is so famous for. One of the things that's so neat is he's got this gesso texture that he puts down first, and then the drawing on top lets that texture shine through. So what's really cool is there's areas where he'll put a lot more texture, where you can see this really cool sweeping area right here, and it just, it almost makes that lightsaber look electric, super cool. And then there's areas here where not as much texture, but the thing that I love is there's some areas here where if he sharpens his color pencil, he can get in and really get some really fine details, but if he has a textured area, if he uses the color pencil on the side, it's almost like he's just scraping the color pencil on top and then the color pencil just picks up the texture that's on top. When you see the printed version, it all just kind of comes together, but when you see these originals in person, it is just absolutely incredible. So hanging out with me today is Ben Stevens, who is the owner, collector, curator of Galactic Gallery. There's so many amazing pieces here and such an incredible Drew Struzan collection. I'm curious, do you have a favorite? I do. I picked this one out of our safe, and uh, this is one that I got from Drew a while back. I do have a couple of other uh, Struzans at home that are near and dear to me as well. This, this is one of my favorites. It's, it's Indiana Jones and the Infernal yeah. Machine. And anytime he illustrates Indiana Jones, it's incredible. But I remember when I saw that when the game came out and I saw this illustration, it was magical because he brought back Indiana Jones in a way we've never seen, but it's it's totally indie. Yeah. So it's amazing. It's amazing so like this. It's very dreary. And one of the few indie posters that Lucas and Spielberg don't know. So, yeah. yeah. Masters of the Universe. Now, this was not a favorite movie of mine, but I have always marveled at the poster. And this just looks like it would be such an amazing movie. It's such an incredible poster. I love the colors, I love everything about it, but seeing the original, seeing this actual work of art, it's mind blowing. Just looking at all of the little paint spatters, looking at all of the cool geometric patterns that Drew drew with, I just said Drew drew, Drew drew with, with color pencil. It's, it's just so cool. I love the transition. Again, like this is purples going into the warmer pinks, into the oranges, but then he's got like the blue silhouette of Skeletor's ship right here that makes it stand out. I also love like some of the veiny, like muscular arms here. It looks like it's a little bit of a throwback to the JC Linedecker style that's just a little bit more geometric. I love this. Oh my gosh, there's more in here, come on. One of the things I love about the Police Academy posters is an artist is someone who loves Drew's work and I just love to study portraits and how different artists handle portraits. One of the great things about the Police Academy posters is they really are just a montage of all of these characters and you get to see how Drew approaches all of these different faces and he approaches each one differently just the expressions and, and the colors that he'll use, it's just amazing. It's so cool to see all collected into one piece. I feel like each one of these faces is its own masterpiece. And it's kind of cool as you go through the Police Academy movies, like this one also with the high element. It's just wild. It's just incredible to look at all of the color and then things like how he'll do stylized hair, the way that he'll approach the hair here, the way that he approaches the hair here is different. It's not the same, yet it all works together. It's all cohesive. I also love looking at things like this pigeon here. Is that a pigeon, Casey? A seagull? Oh, seagull. Okay, the seagull right here. Um, I love how the wing that's in front is in focus and there's a little bit of outlining and there's a lot of detail in the feathers, but the wing that's farther away is a little bit more blurry. Somehow, with color pencils, he managed to draw something blurry. And it's almost like you can see a little bit more movement, a little more motion. And I love here how the machine gun that's shooting, how he achieved through using washes, it just gives the illusion that this gun is kind of do -do 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 -do, like it's moving. And it's just a series of washes that just kind of emulate the shape of the gun, 
just a little bit, ever so slightly, a little bit of color pencil, like throwing in some color like to show the motion, and it works. It's just amazing to see the amount of work that you have here. It's just incredible, the quality of it. It's just amazing to see how well preserved everything is. And think about this for a second. This is 70 pieces of 600. Wow. So we'll, we will rotate them through. And yeah. Well, and I just saw the other day that you sold the Beauty and the Beast piece, which yeah. has always been one of my favorite Yeah, it never pieces. made the wall. Uh, the guy inquired. It sold without ever hitting the wall. But it was a beautiful piece, too. Yeah. It's incredible the amount of artistry that Drew puts into even the comps, which is just trying to sell what the final poster could be. And it, like this alone already is just... So this is kind of cool here to see this comp for American Tail. This comp alone already, like the detail in the luggage, like this could already be the movie poster. So the great thing here, not only do we have the comp of an American Tail, there's the original of the poster right over there. Look at the detail in the luggage. The textures here, you can see this leather is starting to like rip away a little bit. Look at the, I don't even know, Casey, what's this fabric right here called? Like, I can't believe, you know what this fabric is? It looks is? like a carpet bag. It's like, like a carpet bag. Yeah. Wow. So they say you never want to meet your idols. I've actually had the opportunity to meet Drew several times and I was really nervous because my own work, I've always been such a fan that I feel like my work, there's no, I mean, Drew Struzan is often imitated but never duplicated, right? And he's basically created that cinematic look that people want in movie posters and cinematic artwork. It's just that style that everyone's trying to get. And I've met Drew several times. I was so nervous at first because I spent the beginning part of my career basically emulating his technique and just trying to get that look. Part of it was because I was such a big fan. Part of it was because my clients that would hire me, they wanted it to look like Drew Struzan's work, but they couldn't afford Drew. So I was really sheepish the first time I met him. I thought, oh my gosh, he's not gonna like me. He's gonna think like, all I do is copy off his style and stuff. Nothing could be further from the truth. He was the nicest guy, a total gentleman. And in fact, he really encouraged me and he gave me some great tips, not only with my work and what I could do to make it better, he gave me some awesome business tips and some things that I could do to really elevate my career. He thought my work was really good. He thought I was selling myself short with things like pricing. And Drew is one of the people that encouraged me to really get to that next level and really demand better clients and to get the better gigs. You have to believe in your work and you gotta take it up a couple notches and it worked. It paid off really, really well. And I have, I have so many things to thank Drew for. Um, but that's one of them. So that was definitely a case of meeting your idol where he, he did not disappoint. He is just an absolute gentleman. He's very humble. If anyone deserves to have like a big ego, it would be him and he absolutely does not. He is an artist through and through. This is wild. I've never seen this movie, The Outing, but this poster, this has got to be one of the most incredible pieces of art for a film I have ever seen. The limited choice of color, yet yeah, it's it's so amazing. It's almost like there's just two colors here. There's a lot more than two going on, but there's two main colors. And just looking at each face, how each face has been rendered, yet very stylized with like the eyelashes and the cast shadows, the light coming from underneath. I also love that Drew actually drew the logo here for the film and it's also reflecting in the swampy water. That's incredible. One of the things that is so neat though, when you really look closely, a lot of times with the technique that Drew does, it's not just about what he draws, it's about what he doesn't draw. So when you look at like these trees in the background, it's really interesting because the way that he drew them, he didn't draw the trees at all. He drew the background around the tree. So there's kind of like this darkness that's sprayed in first and then he's using color pencils and paint to pull out the highlights in between each of those branches. So what happens, it's not like he's drawing all of the crazy branches. He's making these geometric shapes in between all of the tree branches. And so what you see is the trees, but it's like he drew the opposite. It's just amazing. I have 
this poster in my classroom as well. I actually have the French version of this poster. Again, just seeing the variety of techniques. The sky is nice and smooth here, but to kind of add the whole bedrock texture that's going on down here, it's a really cool technique where Drew will take water, he'll spritz the water down, then he'll spray color on top of that. He'll wait for the paint to dry, but the water droplets are still wet, and then he'll use paper towels to pull away, and it makes this really cool texture happening down here. You can see some of that texture going on in this steamroller part of the, uh, the bedrock mobile. Is that what that's called, Casey? Oh, I don't remember. I forget. I should remember, I watched it about a hundred times as a kid. One of the great things about Drew Struzan, when he talks about his work, he doesn't really talk specifically about techniques, even though he does have a process like any artist does. He really talks about art almost in this larger sense that's just kind of um, almost metaphysical, but it's really, really amazing. And the way that he talks about art, it's almost like, um, a lot of times he says when he creates it, he's dancing, he's moving with it, and it's almost like it's a performance art. And he has an objective, he has inspiration, he has something he's trying to create, but his process is just kind of becoming one with the art, and what's left behind is this beautiful image that is a recording of the experience of creating it. There's just a lot of interviews I've read, like every magazine that's ever talked with him. He's had DVD ROMs and CDs and everything. And it's, it's just a joy hearing how he talks about his process. I know it sounds weird, like if you're an illustrator and you know process and you kind of know the step-by-step -step that you go through with your routine, he talks a lot about putting his heart into things, and he really does. And especially when you see these originals up close, his heart and soul is in, it's in every single one of these pieces. It's just, uh, I know I keep saying it's amazing, but that's exactly what it is. Tell me about how these are framed. This is really nice where you get to see, I was worried with, especially with Drew Struzan originals, I love, as I'm sure you do too, I love seeing the, the, the like yeah, I've never seen the edge things. of this. And sometimes you see like the crop lines and stuff. Like to me, that's part of the art. No, so, I've always loved that about original works. Yeah. Is is that that's what makes it different from the poster. Is you get to see the whole thing. I had tested this on a couple of pieces. And they're just acrylic boxes that a local business makes. And I like it because the focus is on the art and not on a big frame and it, it blends into the wall well, especially when you have uh, white borders. It just sits on the wall perfectly. Yeah, it really does. One of the things that blows me away, and especially seeing some of this work in person that's, that's just amazing, is seeing Drew's use of color. So I'm looking at Michael Keaton here, and when you look closely, there's a little bit of lilac in the ear. There's a little bit of lilac right next to the ear. There's a little bit of lilac just grazing across the neck here slightly. I feel like if I started putting lilac in my faces, like I feel like people would just be like, why is his ear purple? Why is, why is his neck purple over here? But Drew just does it with grace. It's so cool, just his use of color is it, it's, it's just, it's just incredible. It's unsurpassed. I feel like your prices are fair. I mean, obviously Drew's work is very, you know, expensive as it should be, but I feel like it's not totally outrageous. Like if someone wants something, I feel like it's achievable. Yeah. These are the, the prices. His, his work are. is, it hits many different price points. I mean, as low as $500 for smaller uh, pencil work, uh, up to, you know, expensive works. But uh, there's something, there's a brew for everyone. There is, and that's the amazing thing about his work, is his comps, some, and even his pencil renderings, which is one of the things I'm eyeing. Yeah. They're so beautiful, just the motion to his line work and stuff. It really is incredible. Yeah. I love hearing artists talk about Drew. It's, <laughs> it's, it's different, you know? Yeah. So in this room here, this is a collection of Drew's work that focuses a little bit more on his personal studies, which is really neat because a lot of times, we as commercial artists, when we get art directed into a piece, and especially when Drew does, there's a certain style that they want. There's just kind of that movie poster cinematic style. So you don't get to play a whole lot. There's just kind of an expectation to what the art is. 
So to see Drew being experimental and just kind of playing around and doing his thing and creating art, not just for a client, but creating art for himself, it's really, really wild to see some of the stuff that he's come up with. So people should definitely check out the website because you have a really nice setup there where people can see what you have, what you have available, and it looks like it's pretty easy where people can order. And I'm sure the way you take care of stuff here that you probably uh, take care of stuff really well to ship it out wherever people want. Yeah, we ship it. Not every day, but every week. Mm -hmm. You've got a nice setup in here, Rob. Notice you've got the, the camera lights with the 45 degree yeah. angles to photograph yeah. stuff. And it looks like a great place yeah, to kind of kind of great wide and wide angle uh, lens on that and really it's a six foot poster wow. at, at that height. I love this piece right here and this is done, I believe, it doesn't say here, but I'm pretty sure this is with color pastel, which you don't see a lot of in Drew's work. Usually it's color pencil and acrylics. So to see him getting a, a little bit chalkier, but just look at the colors in this. It's just amazing. And his sense of design, again, the form shadow, the cast shadows. I love that there's parts of this where the border is really emphasized. And then there's areas where things just kind of they stop where the border is, but it doesn't have the heavy border on it. And then there's things on purpose that break the border and it just kind of helps the motion. So I've been a huge Drew fan for a long time and there's not a lot in here that I haven't seen before. A lot of, again, I've only seen it in print, so seeing the originals is amazing. One thing I had never seen before is this piece. This is truly incredible and this is the first piece. You know, Drew, he's had a long career. He didn't always use the airbrush, and this is the first piece, the first professional piece he ever did utilizing an airbrush into his work, which is crazy because it's so good. This looks like some, like it's an expert piece using the airbrush. It's so good, but this is the first one. It's marvelous. It's just amazing seeing how he was able to incorporate the purples and blues, but he's got the orange standing out for this Blam. I don't even know what this is, but if there's a poster of this somewhere, I need it. What an incredible facility you have here. It's just amazing. You guys have to come visit. For artists and illustrators, this is like Disneyland, and it's a destination that you have to hit, that you have to come check out. Thank you so much for having me out. It's just amazing. It's just inspiring. I can't wait to go home and do more artwork. This was the, yes. re not like I needed a recharge. I didn't know I needed a recharge, but this is it. I got it, so woohoo, <laughs> that's awesome. So Drew is now retired. He is not creating any more new commercial work, but there is so much out there. There is so much to discover. There's a lot here that I never knew existed actually. And I'm, I like to think I'm the hugest Drew fan ever. So check it out. Look at his work, drewstruzan.com. And even though he's not producing new commercial work, his work lives on forever and it inspires all of us. Always something new to see. There's always a new texture or a little, you know, technique or color or a little detail that you can hear. If you're a Drew Struzan fan, you gotta come to Galactic Gallery. Come and check everything out. It's absolutely amazing. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.